Hello there, and welcome to this video on the Day State Pulsar. In this video, we're going to be covering a full disassembly of the rifle, as well as giving you any information you need as we walk through the procedure. On your screen now will be a complete list of all the tools that we're going to use in order to carry out this disassembly procedure, and it includes all of the Allen key sizes, all of the spanner sizes, and finally any Day State specific tooling required for the job. The only other thing that I would like to mention before we get started is that this particular rifle is a 177 sub 12 pound rifle, although the information in this video will also be relevant to the other calibers and other power levels. With that all out of the way, the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the rifle is safe to work on by first cocking the rifle, removing our magazine or single shot loader, then firing the rifle into a nice safe backstop. This ensures that the rifle is safe to work on and that there's not a pellet loaded into the barrel. I have already done that just to save us a little bit of time, so the next thing we're going to be doing is removing the stock. And that's done by removing this bolt in the bottom using a 5mm Allen key. With that done we can simply slide the stock off nice and carefully. And then put that nice and carefully over to one side. The only other thing that I'll mention is that the rifle has to be on safe in order to get the stock off, otherwise the safety will come in contact with the side of the stock. The next thing we can do is disconnect the battery. On this rifle the battery is at the back and we simply need to pull this connection off, then pull the battery pack itself off. On this particular rifle it uses the AA style batteries, Although on later rifles, this was replaced by an 11.1 volt rechargeable one piece battery. The other thing that I'll mention is if you plan on carrying out any work related to the electronic side of the rifle, it is recommended to disconnect the battery, then leave the rifle overnight in order for the capacitors on board to discharge fully. I've already done this and that's why this battery pack has two batteries missing. Next up, we're going to be degassing the rifle. To degas the rifle, the first thing we need to do is remove this end cap, put that over to one side, then we can slide this plastic cover off the front. With that done, to degas the rifle, I'm going to be using the Daystate degassing tool, and the first thing I like to do is remove the fitting from the end, clip that onto the foster fitting, and then screw the tool into the back. After a few turns, you should feel the tool contact with the one-way plunger inside the foster fitting, and then a few more turns after that, that will deseat the plunger and allow air from the cylinder to flow out through the foster fitting. Simply leave the rifle to stop hissing, and then we can remove the tool. As you can see, I've already degassed the rifle just to save us a little bit of time, but the next thing we're going to be doing is making sure that the rifle is fully degassed and safe to work on. To do that, I'm going to be taking a 16mm spanner and cracking the foster fitting loose. As you can see, the foster fitting has gone loose straight away and there is no resistance in the threads. If this was still tight at this point, it may be because there is still air acting on the back of the foster fitting, making it stiff to undo. If after using the degasser you're still worried about air inside the cylinder, what you can do is unscrew the foster fitting very slightly, quarter turn at a time, until the doughty washer, this piece here, deseats from its seal against the face of the cylinder. Once the doughty washer deseats, air will start to leak around the foster fitting, and you should be able to leave the rifle until it stops hissing. With that said, we have a number of seals, so we have a doughty washer here, and a seal on the end of the one-way valve. The seal on the end of the one-way valve stops air from leaking out of this hole here, so if you have air leaking from this hole here, you just simply need to replace that seal. If you have air leaking out of the joint between the foster fitting and the front of the end cap here, you simply need to replace the doughty washer, this piece here. With that said, beneath the foster fitting there will be a small spacer, so we'll just knock that out, and there we have it there. Up next we're going to be removing the barrel assembly as well as the top rail. 
To start off with, we're going to be unscrewing the shroud. And I will make you aware that beneath the shroud at the front here, there is a number of baffles as well as a long spring. So the shroud will want to move forward of its own accord as you unscrew it. But with it unscrewed, we can tip the spring out as well as the baffles inside the end of the shroud. On this rifle, there are five baffles. And the only thing that we're not going to be doing is taking the end cap off of the shroud as they're normally either done up fairly tight from the factory or Loctited in place. So we're going to be leaving it where it is. Up next, we can remove the scope rail from the top of the rifle by loosening the three securing screws. Then that's done using a three millimeter Allen key. And there we have it. There are a couple of different versions of the scope rail. I believe the earlier one had a support somewhere in this area here, but this is the one fitted to this rifle. Up next, to remove the barrel, we can simply loosen these two grub screws here using a two and a half mil Allen key. With those loose, we can pull the barrel out of the end. And then if we want to, we can also remove the shroud support by loosening the six grub screws three in either side, again using a two and a half mil Allen key. When they're all loose, we can simply slide the end cap off and there we have it. We'll put this over to one side. The only other thing that I'll mention before we do that though, is it does have an O-ring in this area here and that just stops air from leaking out of the joint between the two shroud components when the rifle is fired. This isn't a permanent seal o-ring. Up next we can remove the front shroud carrier by loosening these two grub screws here using a 2mm allen key. Again, this piece houses an o-ring around the outside here. However, this isn't a sealing o-ring. It just stops the metal to metal contact between the shroud and the support. The last thing I'll mention is that the barrel houses three O-rings, two external ones, one internal one, and these all are non-permanent sealing O-rings, so they only see pressure when the rifle is fired. If you have a leak of air emanating from around the breech, so in this area here, it will be one of these three O-rings. The internal breech seal, so that one in the end of the barrel, seals around the pellet probe. So if you have air leaking out of the joint between the barrel and the pellet probe, when the rifle is fired of course, you simply need to replace that o-ring. These two o-rings here seal on the inside of the block, and if they have failed, air will be able to leak to atmosphere around the block area. With that said, the only other thing we'll do whilst we're here is remove the cheek piece by loosening these two grub screws here using our 2.5mm Allen key. Up next, we're going to be removing the cylinder, and to do that, all we need to do is unscrew the cylinder from the end here. It may be done up fairly tight, and there are a couple of O-rings that seal on the inside of the cylinder, so it is a little stiff to unscrew. There we have the cylinder off from the rifle. Then to unscrew the other end, you could either use a set of pin nose pliers or snap ring pliers to remove it, or I'm just going to be using a pin tool. With that done, we've exposed four O-rings, so two sets of two, one at either end. This set of O-rings here seals off on the inside of the cylinder and stops cylinder pressure from leaking out of the joint between the cylinder and the main block. Similarly, these two O-rings here seal off the end cap and stop air from leaking out of the end of the piece, so around this joint here. If any of those O-rings have failed, you'll have air constantly leaking out of either end, and you simply need to replace these sets of O-rings. The other thing that I'll mention is that the cylinder is marked with a test date, so just be aware of that. Up next, we're going to be removing the trigger linkage from the bottom of the rifle, and to do that, the first thing we need to do is disconnect both the safety and the trigger from the main board. To get to the main board, we need to loosen these three screws here using a flat bladed screwdriver. With 
With all three screws removed, we can remove the plastic cover and that exposes the main circuit board. If we take a look at the main circuit board, we have the cocking indicator at the back here. We have the battery connection in the middle. We have the coil connection up here, as well as the trigger and the safety connection over here. And then the pressure sensor up there. We're going to be removing the connection between the trigger and the main board by simply teasing up the connection from either side. Being nice and careful as you do it, I just use my fingernails to get on either side of the connection, then wiggle it up. You don't want to pull the wires themselves as they are fairly small and can be easily broken. So just make sure that you're gripping the connection rather than the wires themselves. With that done, to remove the trigger plate from the bottom of the action, I'm going to be loosening off this screw here using a 17mm spanner. And with the screw removed, we can simply remove the trigger plate from the bottom, and there we have it. We'll be putting this to one side and disassembling it further very shortly. Next thing we're going to be doing is removing the main circuit board from the block itself. Now, I will mention, the first time that you take the plastic cover off the rifle, the connections will probably be covered in a dielectric grease. It's a clear grease that stops the components from corroding as the rifle is in use. I've just gone around and cleaned the worst of it off just to save us a little bit of time. And with that said, the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the coil wires by loosening these two screws here, either by using a good quality flat bladed screwdriver or a cross headed bit. With that done, the next thing we're going to do is remove the trigger plate by loosening this screw off in the bottom using a 5mm allen key. With that done, we can very gently pull the trigger plate off from the bottom of the rifle, being careful not to catch the coil wires as we do so. As you can see, the pressure sensor is still connected, so the next thing we're going to do is very carefully disconnect that. It is a little fiddly to get your hands in the right position, but just be nice and careful and try and get on the connection itself rather than by tugging on the wires. But with that done, that's the main circuit board removed from the bottom of the rifle. What we'll do is we'll stick this component to one side and start work on disassembling the main block. With that done, the next thing we're going to do is fully disassemble the main block of the rifle. To start off with, I'm going to be removing the pressure sensor, which is this piece here. And I'm going to be doing that using a adjustable spanner. Cracking it loose, then unscrewing it by hand. The pressure sensor does have a small doughty washer beneath the edge of it there. So if this has failed, air will be leaking out between the pressure sensor and the main block of the rifle. Up next, we're going to remove the cylinder housing. And to do that, we need to loosen the four securing screws, two on the front, two on the back, using a 4mm allen key. As you take the screws out, just keep a firm grip of the component as valve return spring pressure will want to force the component off. So there we have it. There's the main block. It does have two sealing O-rings, so two around to this boss here, and they stop air from leaking out between the joint of the block and the joint of this front section here. So if you have air leaking out of that joint there, you simply need to replace both of these O-rings here. The other thing I'll mention before we move on is that there are two sizes of screws. So the long ones go in the bottom and the short ones go in the top. So just be aware of that. The next thing we'll do is remove the valve by simply pulling it out of the front of the rifle. And there we have the valve pin along with the valve return spring. We can also remove the valve seat. So that's that beige colored thing in the end there by simply knocking it out. If it's a little stuck in its housing, like this one is, we can also just use a plastic o-ring pick 
come in the end there and hook it out of its seat. So there we have it. So there's the valve seat along with the securing o-ring. The valve seat's job is to stop air leaking through the valve and out the barrel. So if you have a constant leak out of the end of the barrel, you need to replace the valve seat and the securing o-ring. So these two pieces here. The peak part seals against the valve pin, like so, and stops air from moving around the valve until the rifle is fired, at which point the valve is deseated and air is able to flow through into the transfer port and push a pellet out the end of the barrel. Next up, we're going to be removing the coil and the hammer assembly. To begin with, we need to remove the two bolts at the rear of the action, this one here and this one here. As you can see, these aren't standard bolts, they are anti-temper bolts, and to remove those, we need to use the corresponding anti-temper pin. So I'll just install that, get that seated on the screws nicely, then I'm going to be using a spanner just to crack those loose. These are normally only fitted on the sub 12 pound rifles. On the FAC and high power models, these are replaced by just standard screws. As you remove the back one, just keep your finger over this plate here, as it will want to move back as you unscrew the screw. With that done, we can pull the cocking indicator out by using a pair of pliers gripping lightly this pin here and pulling that all the way down, then sliding this back section out of the rear of the block. So there we have that. Put that over to one side. Then we can remove the hammer as well as a few other components. So we have the wavering here. That's called the wavering. We have the return spring for the hammer as well as the hammer itself. Up next, from the back of the action, we can remove this plastic plug. That's just a spacer piece which the hammer runs in. Then we can remove the coil. To remove the coil, we need to very carefully bend down these wires here, poke them back through the action nice and carefully, then slide the coil out the rear of the action. If the coil and the sleeve separate, don't worry, they can just be pushed back together. With that done, we'll remove the cocking arm and pellet probe next. And to do that, we'll be using a 2.5mm Allen key to remove this screw in the back of the action. Then we can simply slide the pellet probe and the cocking arm out the back. As you do that, just be nice and careful that you don't lose the cocking arm bush. So that piece there. The pellet probe and the cocking arm can be disassembled further if we wanted to. So to remove the pellet probe, we'd simply need to loosen this scrub screw here using a quality flat bladed screwdriver. These are normally done up fairly tight from the factory and with a little bit of Loctite. So just be nice and careful as you undo it. There we have the little pin. We can then remove the pellet probe. Then we can remove this linkage from the cocking arm by loosening and removing this scrub screw here. Then once it's loose, you can simply pull the screw out nice and carefully like that. As you pull that out, you may need to put a little bit of pressure on this arm here in order for the hole to line up nicely and the pin to come out as it should. There we have the arm. We do also have a spring and a ball bearing in this hole here. So I'm just going to be removing those very quickly. So there's the ball bearing. And then the spring can be removed just using a either a set of tweezers or a small allen key, something like that. So there's the small spring. To remove the valve from inside the block, the first thing we need to do is remove the magazine indexing system. That's done by removing these two screws here using a two millimeter allen key. Now 
As you remove the second screw, just be nice and careful as the plate itself does have a small spring beneath it. So we have the small spring along with the magazine indexing plunger. Just going to be pulling that out using a set of tweezers. On this rifle, the cup came out as well. So we have the pin in the middle, the cup around the outside, then a small O-ring in the middle there. If the cup stays inside the block, like that, you can use a set of pin nose pliers coming in the middle there, expanding the pliers nice and carefully like that, then pulling the block out as one piece. So sometimes the cup gets stuck in there and that's an easy way to remove that. Up next we can remove the valve from inside the action. To begin with we need to tip out this spacer ring which is in the rear of the action, just in this hole here. And then we can push the valve out by pushing on one of the two holes in the end here. So if the camera will focus, you can see we have one at the bottom here, and then another at the top. And there we have the valve. So that's the main heart of the rifle. We have a couple of O-rings around this section here, as well as one at the back. The one at the back is a non-permanent seal. It only sees pressure when the rifle is fired. The one at the front stops air from leaking out through the transfer port and into the barrel. So if you have a leak emanating from the barrel end, you would need to replace this o-ring as well as the valve itself. And finally, once again, this o-ring here is a non-permanent seal, so it only sees air when the rifle is fired. And if this one has failed, air will be leaking up through the action. The same as this one here. With that said, that's the valve and the block fully disassembled. We can move on to some of the sub-assemblies. The next thing we'll disassemble is the main bolt. So we have the bolt along with the trigger housing, as well as a few other bits connected to it. To begin with, we're going to be flipping the bolt up and removing the battery connection. And to remove that, we're just simply going to loosen the two securing screws using a 2mm Allen key. Up next, I'm going to disconnect the cocking sensor, so this wire here. Again, nice and careful, coming on the component and gripping the connection rather than the wires themselves, then just gently wiggling it loose. With that done, we can flip the board over and remove the three securing screws on the back here using a flat bladed screwdriver. With the three screws removed, we can very carefully remove the top cover, put that over to one side, then we can very carefully remove the main board, hooking the battery wire off of the trigger housing as we do so. There we have it. The main board does have an insulation piece between the metal of the trigger housing and the board itself, so just make sure that doesn't get lost. And then the last thing we could do if we really wanted to is disconnect the battery wire by simply pulling it off the main board. There we have it. So there's a close up of the circuit board. The next thing we can do is fully disassemble the trigger assembly. To start off with, we're going to be gently picking the wires out from the housing. These are normally covered over by a sticky back piece of plastic, so just be nice and careful as you pull the wires off, removing the piece of plastic as we go. Once this part has been removed, we can separate this piece from the trigger assembly by simply loosening these two screws here using a 4mm Allen key. Go 
being nice and careful as we separate the components as to not damage the wires. Next thing we'll do is once more we'll pick off the piece of plastic over these pieces of wire. Being nice and careful as we do that. And then if we flip the board up we can remove the two switches inside of the unit. That's done by removing these four screws here. And before we go any further I do just want to show you the difference between the two trigger units. As you can see this is the older fixed blade style and this is the newer match blade style. Both triggers are pretty much assembled in exactly the same way and it is possible to swap the triggers out without fully disassembling the unit. To remove the trigger blade all we need to do is flip the unit up, locate this screw here and loosen that using a nice big cross headed screwdriver. With that screw loose we can pull the spring plate out and then we can see inside of the trigger unit. With that done we can use a small allen key to push this pin out here. Being nice and careful as we do so. So there is the pin. And then with that loose we can simply slide the trigger up and out of the top of the unit. So there we have it. There's the trigger removed. This piece of information is probably more useful when you're swapping over from the fixed blade to the match blade, as what you can do is loosen the screw in the top, push out the pin from one side, lift the trigger out through the top of the unit, and then swap over to the match blade style nice and easily. So you can swap the trigger blade over very very quickly and without removing any of the switches in the top here. You will probably have to readjust your trigger but that's not a problem that's fairly easy. With that demonstrated we can continue on with the disassembly and the next thing we're going to do is remove these four screws here to remove the two switches for the trigger. As you undo these be careful as they do have a number of small nuts on the back so do it on a nice flat surface. So there we have all of the nuts removed. The next thing we can do is push the screws out. And then the switches can be simply lifted out of the top. The next thing we can do is remove the laser unit from the front of the device by using a 2mm allen key to loosen these two securing screws here. There we have it, there's the trigger unit disassembled along with the switches and the laser. I will mention these two screws at the front of the device here are for zeroing the laser so you don't need to remove them in order to remove the laser from the rifle. The very very last thing I'm going to remove is the safety so to remove that we simply need to push this pin out here being careful not to lose the small spring so that one there and then we can Tip the safety up, removing the plunger, and then the safety blade itself should fall out from one side. With that all done, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. So in the next video, we'll be taking these individual components and rebuilding them into a fully functioning and complete rifle. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been interesting or useful, and we'll see you in the next one.